and I think we are good to go. Great. Well, I, this is Laura Lewis. I'm the director for the WSU Food Systems Program, and I'm here with Abba Kaiser, who's our project manager for our food systems innovation events. And we'd like to welcome you to our quarterly call. Um, and we are really excited today, not only for the number of people who registered to participate in this call, uh, but also for the generosity of the speakers who agreed to also uh, speak about their work and also uh, response to COVID-19. So I'm assuming everyone's probably at home somewhere um, across the country and uh, the state. And we're just really blessed to have you all participate on this call. So before we get started, I just wanted to do a land acknowledgement. Um, we acknowledge the traditional lands and territories of the many Coast Salish peoples who have stewarded the land where we live in Port Townsend, Washington. I live out on Maristone Island, including Macaw, Chimicum, and Clallam peoples. And at the end of the presentation, we'll have a link for a 21-day racial equity habit building challenge, which is going on now. So it's uh, still live until Friday. So we just wanted to put a plug in for them. Here's our agenda for today. I'm gonna to turn it over to Abba. Great, thank you, Laura. So as Laura mentioned, I know most of you on the call, but I know there are some outside folks coming in. So wanted to just do a quick introduction of myself. I'm the project manager for the WSU Food Systems Program. We're gonna just talk a little bit about our program and the Cascadia Grains Initiative. Um, as well as a brief overview of the national regional grain movements. Um, later today, we actually have a call scheduled with folks from uh, across the nation who are all doing this work uh, regionally in their own communities. And uh, just wanted to give you a heads up about all the work that's going on. And then we're gonna move into our, our featured presentations. We have uh, Kevin Morse from Cairn Spring Mills, Keith Kistler from Finn River Grain Company, Mel Darbyshire from Grand Central Baking, and Brenda Book from the WSDA Organic Program here to talk a little bit about the nuances and experiences that they're uh, seeing due to this pandemic and also just ways that they see to collaborate. Um, and just how are we doing? How are we dealing? How can we support each other uh, through this time? And then another, uh, after that, we're going to be breaking out into uh, discussion announcement groups. This is really a time for you to talk to each other and to do a very brief uh, announcement of what you're working on, what you're seeing uh, in terms of supporting the small scale uh, ecologically sound practices here for the grain economies uh, across the region in the Northwest. So um, that will happen. We'll do a little breakout uh, Zoom rooms and that will we'll, we'll let you know how to do that when we get there. Uh, but uh, then we'll come back together at the end of the call and wrap up. Next slide. So just a little more background, Laura's our director for the WSU Food Systems Program. I'm our project manager and I also uh, run the Cascadia Grains Conference and the, the subsequent network, which has turned into these regional calls. And we're constantly trying to think about ways that we can evolve and meet the needs of a small scale regional grain economy here in the Northwest. So this is our mission statement for the food systems. <laughs> foster viable farm businesses, optimize sustainable natural resource stewardship, and promote scaled processing and distribution. Nicole Witham, who's also on the call, uh, is our statewide coordinator for the, food, uh, for the food systems team, which is a team of over 100 professionals working statewide, and she's also our farm walk coordinator as well. Next slide. We uh, just wanted to let you know also about our Food Systems Friday webinars that are a, a larger opportunity to connect uh, with our team and folks from outside of the, uh, out, outside of the state as well. Um, you can register, there's gonna be links at the end of this presentation and we're also recording it so you can, um, don't have to write this down right now, but that's uh, coming up. The first one is this Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific. And uh, again, just another chance to connect and collaborate uh, around all of our needs. I know there's a lot of webinars happening right now, but um, we wanted to provide an, an, a platform for our team to come in and connect. So you're invited to that as well. So just a little background on the Cascadia Grains Conference. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, we were born in 2013. 
out of a desire to connect farmers, processors, and resource providers across the regional specialty grain economy in Western Washington. The WSU Bread Lab, WSU Extension Pierce County, and WSU Extension Thurston County led the original effort to develop a complimentary sister event to the successful grain gathering from the Bread Lab. So, uh, we are in partnership with community-based organizations. Uh, we secured some funding through USDA Risk Management Grant to hold the very first Cascadia Grains event in Tacoma in 2013. Eight years, 2,400 attendees, 180 classes, 90 sponsors, and 400 instructors later, we are very excited to see the work that is developing across the grain shed. Um, led us to do an exercise this past year, which was a working group session. And this helped uh, gather some information around the values of the folks who came to the conference. We had over 200 farmers, bakers, millers, chefs, brewers, distillers, and researchers present, uh, or sorry, participate in this survey. And the results um, help, help, are gonna help guide our work for the next, um, the next while here, next slide. The folks who were in the room, you can see uh, the folks who took the survey were um, processors mostly. We break those out into bakers, professional and home bakers, brewers, chefs, restaurants, maltsters and millers. And you can see from the main group, we had uh, almost 10% farmers and 10% academics as well. Um, this information is going to go out at the end of this call as well, so we don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. But the next slide is really important because it shows us what the values of this group are. So when they scaled uh, the importance of the different values, the wheel that you see on the left there, um, these values emerged as the top priority for the, the, the session participants. So taste and flavor, cultural relevance, environmentally sound practices, domestic, local, and regional markets, health and nutrition, and equitable access. And when we asked them about the resources that would be the most helpful to them, the first one, which is sort of turned on its head right now, is interactive face-to-face -face educational networking events, uh, followed closely by a website and directory, and then an email listserv, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and then a blog newsletter and a printed resource catalog. So we're going to do our best to frame our work with these values and move forward with these priorities um, for providing resources. Next slide. So we created a new regional grains discussion list. Um, everyone on this call has been added to that. Uh, and so if you don't wanna be a part of it, you can unsubscribe, but uh, we figured since you're on this call, you might be interested in connecting with others who are also in this world. Um, we're gonna be doing a launch email this afternoon so that you have the email and, and know how to use it. But uh, you have all already been added to this discussion list and we hope that you use it as a way to connect during this time, um, share resources. Um, again, with that, the lens of the values that we uh, were able to crowdsource during this last conference. So next slide. A really quick note, these are other people throughout the nation who are working on this. Uh, and we have many of them who have signed up to be on the leadership call at 1.15, uh, right after this call. So we're excited to be reporting back what we learn from our partners throughout the nation. Next slide. There are other resources that people are working on. This is one example. This is the Artisan Grain Collaborative Regional Grains Map that you can access. The link will be also at the end of this. Um, that just shows different resources for uh, mills, farms, bakeries, restaurants, and advocacy groups, et cetera, across the nation. So we're always trying to think about how to not rebuild the wheel. And we just wanted to let you know that this is a resource you can look to that already exists. So who's on this call? Um, this just shows where some of the folks uh, currently on the call are from, the counties uh, that they're coming from, King County, and um, is our, uh, our largest represented county followed by Thurston and then Skagit, and you can see the rest there, just a little tidbit of info. Next slide. And the self-identified self sectors, so bakers, again, taking the cake with uh, the largest group on the call today, uh, followed by resource providers and advocates, um, academics, and you can see the other folks represented, government, state agencies, and, and some farmers as well. So we're really happy to have everyone. Thanks for joining.
We're going to move now to our featured speakers. And um, Keith, we're going to call on you first. And each one of these folks uh, is identified as a leader in their field. We hope that um, by giving them this time to express what they're going through, that you know you can get a kind of a snapshot of what's going on, and we can kind of get a, a big picture view across the value chain of what's happening in the regional grains world right now. So Keith, with that, are you? Um, are you able to unmute yourself? E, am I unmuted already? You're good, yes. Okay, good. Great, thank you, Abba, for all that introduction. And hello, everybody. Thanks for inviting me along in this conversation. Uh, my name is Keith Kistler, and we are a small farm out in Jefferson County. And um, we... It's a, it's a little uncanny. Our our grain part, portion of our business is just starting as we speak, and um, our cider business has has pretty much shut down. And what's interesting about that is both of these businesses, the cidery business we started right when the 2008 kind of financial collapse happened, <clears throat> and then now we're getting our grain business off the ground right at this time. So it's I'm not sure what that says about our business acumen, but it's been an interesting uh, reflection on, on our business. Um, so yeah, we, we grow um, quinoa, buckwheat, uh, various types of wheat. Uh, we grow rye, a couple of different rye crops. We have a small stone mill that we mill our grain and the flour on the farm. And um, we're quite small scale, and we thought that we were going to have the next month or two to get all this organized and labels produced and, you know, uh, processing rooms finished off and inspected and permitted and, and all that. So we've had to pivot very quickly in a way of... Um, construction and having bringing in extra help to get those things in order and um, luckily our two boys are now home from school so they've been immensely in, in helping run our business with us and, and get things so we've had to really fast track what we're doing uh, in the last uh, and we are just kind of scrambling to, to mill as much flour as we can. We started a CSA model just to get us going and have had a pretty overwhelming response to that and are able to sell uh, that way under the CSA model. And we'll continue to do that until we're fully licensed and permitted to be able to sell to grocery stores and, and things like that in our area. Uh, I think, you know, in terms of supply chain and um, different aspects of, of running this business, we have been pretty lucky in that we're a very small scale. We had a lot of the things on hand already in terms of packaging and uh, some of the masks and hair nets and all those kinds of things. So we haven't really had to deal too much with supply chain issues and we grow all the grain that we mill. So we have that grain on hand and are just going through the process of, of cleaning it and conditioning it and getting it ready to mill. That's great. And Keith, just to jump in, is overwhelmed by the response to the CSA, are you... Um, looking for people to still join or are you sort of at capacity in terms of that response? Uh, I think we've gotten four days, we've gotten ourselves organized and in a, in a rhythm up and keep, keep all the pieces moving efficiently to, to meet that demand. So I don't think we're at capacity necessarily. It's just been in, in the sense of, all the different things that we've had to really quickly put together uh, to make this happen. And yeah. Yeah. So 
Yeah. No, I don't think we're, we're not at capacity yet, but we're, but we're, uh, let me say that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, let's uh, make sure to get the link to say in the um, meeting notes so that people oh, great. can get it to you. Yeah, thank you. Great. Yeah, so, I think what's, what, what we felt is just, you know, what this has, our larger kind of supply chain food system uh, is and how, how, how quickly things become scarce and how that balance is, is so tenuous. And we just feel lucky to be in an in a area or a region that, that has done some work already to build resilience in our food system and uh, feel really fortunate to be kind of part of that process and, and helping in, in, in the ways that we can. Absolutely. We are very fortunate. And thank you for all your work in making local grains a possibility for people here on the peninsula, especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So we're going to move on to, to unmute yourself. I think so. Can you? Go ahead and find where you're at. Yeah, go for it. Okay, well, first I have to share some good news. Um, and she was exposed to and we had to go into self quarantine. And we just got the news this morning that she's in the so We're going back to huge relief. Congratulations. Tremendous. Yeah, I can't even tell you how difficult that was. So it's really, really good to be here today with the good news seen over the past month has been fairly incredible in terms of how our demand and our market channels have changed. Our food service accounts have probably gone down by 50% over the last month. So those are the, the restaurants and the bakeries that are served by like Charlie's Produce and Puget Sound Food Hub and the Chef's Warehouse. Uh, closure of all the restaurants is hard. The good news is, is right now we're seeing them Tech with a lot of the creative uh, takeout and delivery uh, model coming up where people are, are trying to pivot to serve their community in a safe way. Um, the, the consumer demand direct has been bonkers. We are getting calls every day, emails every day, and if they can purchase uh, flour direct from the mill because store shelves are empty. Uh, we even have Costco calling us now just add 50 pound bags to put on pallets on the floor. So we've done a couple. We have uh, done a two Fridays where we've tested a drive-through pickup and pre-order at the building next door to the mill which the port, thank goodness for them, gave us the opportunity to use so we can stay completely separate from the mill and the milling team. And we have people pre-order online um, they pay online, they drive up, we say hello from six feet away, they pop their truck, we put a 50 pound bag in their truck and off they go with a smile and hopefully many loaves of bread and pancakes. Um, we just uh, finished and went live with an online store where people can actually go online and do the ordering instead of us having to manage individual emails. I can provide you guys with the link to that. We already have over um, 100 orders for this Friday, so they just keep increasing as the word gets out. And we're very grateful for that because I think this retail demand, both at the mill and soon we'll be selling five and 10 pound bags once we get through a co-packer, uh, we'll be able to serve a larger community, both the grocery stores and, and the folks that don't wanna buy a 50 pound bag. Um, my team, every day I show up at the mill and I ask them if they wanna be here and they say yes. And it's, um, I'm incredibly proud and grateful for such a committed team. We have locked them down. I mean, me and Tatum and others, our office manager, we don't even go into the mill. We don't allow outside visitors. We don't allow deliveries. People have to leave uh, mail and everything outside and we clean it and sanitize it before it comes into the mill. We're trying to strike a balance between meeting this crazy demand. We're working still 10, 12 hour days and with a small team trying to keep them rested and safe. Um, 
And so far, so good. Everybody's maintaining their sense of humor and sanity. Abba, I can stop there if you have any questions. Before I go sure. Into yeah. Does anyone have any questions for Kevin? They want to pop in the chat. I think uh, maybe not specifically. Well, that's a farmer specific question. Um, well, Kevin, is there any way that this group can support you, I guess, is my question um, in terms of, you know, helping drive traffic or any, you know, any way that we can help spread the word about what you're doing or how that, how can you leverage this group, I guess? I guess I can just tell you what we're going on. Like Keith, we're very fortunate. Our supply chain's all local and regional. And we get more than 60%, 70% of our grains from the Valley. And we have other grains coming in from Walla Walla and Ritzville and the Willamette Valley. And that hasn't been an issue. I think the little things are becoming big things for us. Uh, we're running out of uh, surgical gloves. We're running out of hand sanitizer. Luckily, we have all of the sanitizer we need in the mill through uh, our organic supplier. Uh, little things like food and snacks, we have been so careful about not exposing ourselves outside of the mill or our homes, uh, just figuring out how to get um, food delivered for the team so they don't have to go at night, go home at night and still cook meals and pack meals. Uh, regulatory relief, we got a call from our SQF auditor. We're scheduled for an auditor audit in uh, May and uh, they said they're still gonna do it. So stacking that on top of everything else we're trying to do to stay safe and stay in production. I, I just, that's 250 hours of prep work that we have to do on top of production. And it just seems a little onerous right now. Uh, and then I think continued advocacy for um, emergency loans and operating capital, uh, if and when small producers like us and Keith and others need it. Uh, we're very fortunate to have some investors who are ready to do that for us. Uh, but I'd, I'd love to have more options so we can keep people working and fed. Uh, let's see if yeah. anything else on my list here. I think that cover. Yeah, that's great. And I hope that you continue to engage with us. We're going to be rounding courses um, for small businesses and otherwise on our Friday calls and, and trying to just link to the possible. So um, yeah, thank you for all your work, Kevin. And um, thanks for keeping everybody safe and well fed and cared for on your team. It's a big job right now. Thank you. So Darbyshire from Grand Central Baking, if you want to just unmute yourself, Mel. You guys hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, this has probably been one of the hardest three, you know, like we um, went from, you know, really successful uh, January, February to like over almost 50% reduction in sales combined from like restaurants. Base. So we, you know, had to pivot on a respond to that. Um, we ended up totally laying 150 people company wide and shutting some of our cafes down. Full mode right now. Um, rewrote I reduction limited products because we, we do have, demand through grocery our cafes through online ordering and then some of the restaurants that are doing takeout um but that balance of figuring out how many bakers we can keep here keep them safe um keep them employed and and have everything i want to still want to show to work and feel like we're taking care of them and yet still try and keep the line afloat we're kind of you know we're we're sitting tight you know we're committed you know to what we've been able to be so successful at is you know have great jobs good support our regional grain economies where you know we were 89 percent of our uh, money was going back to local local food chains right uh, the farmers and the mills and you know, balance and keep it afloat we up with a priority list of things that we're focused on as we as we're in transition so it's like people safety, needs of our communities commitment to our supply chain preservation in order to be fiscally sane are the, the baseline we're working on to to move forward and to go to kevin's point you know we were buying 
35 to 38 bags of flour a week, pushing a pallet, and we're down to like eight bags a week right now. And, and that's just kind of heartbreaking. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll weather through and yeah, get back on track. It's basically uh, responding to demand in a way that's smart, you know, and it's all about employee safety right now. We're really fortunate for left or showing up. We're trying to keep everybody well, keep the place super sanitized, um, get supplies for folks. It's the same gloves, masks. You just can't get them. We're sanitizer, um, which is great, but it's, it's the same. Yeah. Every day I come to work and everybody shows up. I feel blessed, you know, that we're able to, to maintain and, and keep, you know, bread going out in our, into our community. Uh, are that we will be able to get some iron knocked out, which hopefully we'll get more of Kevin's flour uh, back in the, in the shop projects that we've just been too busy to get going. So um, keep seeing the positive opportunity as we're in this uh, difficult time um, and looking at for our cafes with online ordering to, you know, having, be selling flour in in retail size bags or bigger for our cafes possibly or this is for people whether it's a pantry box of dry goods farming partnering with some of our farms to do fresh produce and people could sign up we're still trying to figure out what we might be able to do to keep great food accessible to our communities in a safe way so um, hopefully some of that is another kind of revenue stream in a way keeping some and suppliers. Um, yeah. On, but yeah, definitely. It's been a, it's been a challenging few weeks for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And it sounds like with that size of an organization deciding how it mm -hmm. has to be very, very thoughtful and considerate of, of, of your entire, you know, network. hurts you. Yeah. And so I, I think, Having these direct, you know, like Kevin and Tom and Smalls Family Farms, even Shepherd's Brain, you know, where we more direct purchase been is great, you know, because we're a little, it makes us feel a little protected, even though production in, in uh, volume, obviously that affects those businesses too, which is hard, but I feel it's an opportunity to keep them tighter and build the growth and, and show the benefits of how, how critical general grain and regional food systems are, right? If you, if we all the energy and to support them, we actually don't need to commodity, right? We can keep everything kind of in our backyard. And so hopefully it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard journey right now, but I think there's some really great benefits and lessons to be on a larger scale. Yeah. Well, is there anything that you want to group or any questions you want to pose to folks or requests or um, you want to send out? Yeah. I mean, I, I know the Finn river, I know that Piper is with grand central and I mean, maybe when we're through this, you know, I was thinking of ways to do, I don't know if there's a way to do community bakes or fundraising bakes that could help put money in communities that are uh, struggling the restaurant trade or and I you know I, I think energy here maybe in a couple of weeks when everyone everything's stabilized that might be something that would be some sort of collaborative fundraiser mm -hmm. I don't know like um so think about that I've been kind of pondering ways to be able uh, back to some of the communities and business hard hit Great. Yeah, that's a great seed to plant right now as we're sort of uh, just riding this out and seeing it through. So thank you, Mel, for all your work and things get a little bit lighter, lo a lighter load for you. Very you know, it's, yeah. uh, sprint, but yeah, uh, hopefully we're through hardest part and we can stabilize, you know, stabilize, man maintain, get my bakers on a regular schedule. And I think that'll be just better for everyone where we end up. But thank you, everybody. Yeah.
Absolutely. Yeah. And a follow-up survey we're going to ask is whether or not these calls would be helpful to do on a more regular basis of quarterly. So um, at least for the time being, and if, the, you know, if you want to brainstorm about, you know, projects like a, a, a fundraising bakes or things like that, it might be an opportunity for us to connect um, in this we can talk more. Cool. Yeah, about one more thing to add um, to go with what Mel said. We are also donating flour to food banks and kitchens. Mm. We just sent 1,400 flour to the Whatcom School District and all the baking for the needy in Whatcom. So if there are groups that are doing that and that need flour, you can let us know in lists or bakers that are wanting to do community. We're trying to make that balance of charity and giving as well as staying. Please let us know. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Brenda Book. I'm going to unmute her. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So, Brenda Book from WSD Organic Program. Thank you. Um, thanks so much for the opportunity to, to in the call and hear the stories of um, how you guys are, are coping and um, uh, switching, changing and growing and figuring out, you know, what, what forward. Um, I, I want to let that, you know, the agency, not just the organic program, W whole, you know, we, we certainly understand this is a, a really challenging time for everyone. And uh, just like, business and uh, to keep moving forward um, culture and so we are here um, we are fully uh, all of our services do continue um, to we're there to meet your guys' needs um, but we're also um, we need to hear these stories too and we need to hear what what you do need so that we can um, also adjust and and shift uh, to meet the just want to put that out there to everyone. And if you haven't, the, I encourage you to do so um, and to get this out to the group after the call. Uh, but if you even just go to agr.wa.gov, um, right on our, the top, there's a, a red ribbon that's been put across directly to our COVID-19 um, so that gives a bunch of different uh, resources on uh, food safety um, and, and programs are at with. Um, you'll also find from that homepage you know, statements from our uh, uh, on essential services that we are continuing to provide um, and the safety of our food supply. But the director has been trying to get a um, there to history and we've sent it out through different um, avenues and you may have seen it already um, but I'll again send that out all resources how your business can um, keep going um, and get your employees uh, so that they're safe and secure while you're continuing to get food supply um, and then I'll shift just organic program specifically uh, so the WC Organic Program, we serve about 1,300 operations, operations in Washington State. Um, we just have a few few businesses that we serve at, but they're always connected to a state business. Um, and you know, my team uh, uh, is of of making adjustments and shifting so that we can continue our services. All of our uh, office staff, which would be our administrative staff and our review staff, um, and we, we did that really, got them up are fully and encourage everybody, if you have any about um, your specific certification status, if you have any needs, um, new labels or um, things that were kind of in the uh, in the process and now you need to move them along faster, um, please reach out to us. Um, you can call us on your phone. We don't 
have everybody um, have access to that phone line. And so what we're doing are checking um, really regularly. Encourage you to leave a message, give us details of how good time to get back to you, and my team will respond. Um, and that's true for a lot of the Department of Agriculture. You know, leave a message. Um, folks are checking those voicemails. We just may not have direct access when you call, but we will call you right back. Um, but email is also a good way. Um, we're everybody, if you had received uh, mostly hard copy mail, we give people the choice of electronic correspondence. To us, if, if you can make that switch to electronic, it'll just speed and um, and and then I want to so so that all of all of those certification need they're there for you they're happy and then I want to switch to talking about inspections uh, we are working with all the accredited certifiers across the world um, in coming with some consistent uh, approaches to how what inspections look like COVID nineteen. Uh, a lot of different tools available to us and and we're looking at you know what are the best tools to you going to ensure the of your employees your families and our inspectors out in the field so that means looking at you know what can technology do for us um, what can we do with uh, doing um, maybe remote or desk audits um, there's there are options and We'll let any of our existing operations know if there's going to be any changes to uh, we conduct an inspection prior to scheduling that inspection with them so that you too have time to um, but we're uh, we're still developing looks for an annual inspection of an already certified operation and and what that, that new inspection format may may contain also looking at um, how what it looks like for a brand new applicant so somebody doesn't receive certification or an existing new land that can add to their certification um, both of those activities are an inside inspection you know the regulation is, is really clear and we also that's the consumer expectation seeing how can we in a really safe way. How can we uh, get our inspectors out there to visit those sites and maybe not or the farmer right there with us, um, put in phone, have them on um, of, so that we can get our inspectors out on the land that needs to be evaluated, putting anybody in, at risk or in an uncomfortable situation. Um, so again, we're looking at what tools we have available and we'll be um, making some adjustments um, and letting you know what those adjustments are prior to any, any skin of an inspection. Um, and so if you guys are, if you've seen any delays, I just wanna get that message out there to reach out to us. A lot of this, we've gotta look at by case basis, look at where that operation's at, what their needs are, um, what uh, our travel restrictions at a certain point in time. Um, but we need we need to know. Um, reach out, communicate, tell us what uh, we can do for you, and and I'll put that on organic too. Um, uh, let you no know agency on a whole um, can assist you with, um, and I get that to the person to hear that that information thank you brenda and it might yeah. be helpful if you just pop your e box but we will also um send that out as a link as well i will great awesome thank you so much um thank you keith and kevin and mel and brenda for being willing to share a little bit of your story um we're gonna move breakout rooms and we've uh, been working behind the scenes to uh separate you out into different rooms and facilitating one of the rooms and and uh, Laura if you could just go to the next slide it gives a little introduction so in a moment you'll receive a prompt to join one of two breakout rooms it's going to be about 15 announcement time so really like a minute or less that per person uh, um, you know 
or what you're doing right now and what you're doing to pivot to the needs of small scale environmentally sound uh, farmers in this region. So go back. Oh, sorry about that. And uh, come together at five minutes to the hour and um, just reconvene really quickly. So we might go a little bit over on the call. Uh, we'll see you to hop off, then that's all right. So Okay, I'm going to hit the button. Let's see if it works. You'll get okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Great. Yes. Excellent. It worked. Okay, great. So, nice to yeah, and we're going to go ahead and start with farmers. So if you're a farmer and you're on the call and you want to give us a quick update, that would be great. And then we'll just work through the list. We have, um, I think, 25 people, or it looks like 21 right now in our breakout room. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And if you're not um, speaking, can you please mute? Anyone want to jump in? Well, okay, I'm a farmer. Um, Great. <laughs> uh, mostly trying to figure out what uh, what to what to do for the what to what to put in. My markets are. Um, I am not an established, but a beginning farmer, despite the white hair. Um, trying to find markets for for what I can grow. I'm certified organic, so um, I can't grow consider rotations. The COVID situation is making me spend a lot more time at the farm. Um, hasn't really hit me too hard, um, trying to keep the family safe and, and all that. Uh, I'd love to hear what you know, some of the other growers are are doing or thinking about. Um, the last thing I was, you know, one so uh, I've got about four thousand pounds of soft white winter that cleaned and in bags that I don't know what. And I was thinking, with all I may just start milling a little bit in a little stone ground mill and letting them with it not going to get any money from it, but at least it'll do a good use instead of turning into feed or compost. Next. <laughs> Laura, we can hear you. You're muted. Sorry, I said anyone can just jump in as we go along. We have about uh, 12 minutes left. So updates, sharing stories, strategies, um, and we're gonna take notes on all of this. And then when we come back to the group, we'll hear a little bit about breakout one as well and, and send the notes out to everyone in the group as well. So if you have resources, um, you're feeling really challenged and you're looking for resources, this is a time to share. I think I've already shared our challenges and resources. I would just say if there's any help in getting us some of the PE for the team. Um, if anybody has local resources, I know that uh, the distilleries are now making advisor. We're going to reach out to them. Uh, see, was it prior? We're actually getting calls from some of the distilleries that are white wheat. Um, because it's it's a little less expensive than rye, and some of the other grains they bake some of their premium spirits. So that might be a potential market for you too. I know a number of the distilleries actually uh, have their own roller mills to rye in their their flour. If you've got someone local, you might reach out to them with that. Um, that better price than feed for sure. It's a good idea. Thanks, Kevin. Um, this is Terry Grain. Can people hear me? Um, we have uh, we have lots of five pound bags, so I know millions 
who are interested in possibly selling or putting together packets, print things. Uh, we just got a large shipment. We'll have another large shipment coming into town. And we're looking for storage right now for large shipments. Uh, we have um, uh, 40 packs that are coming in on the 15th. And so if anybody knows of any place probably north that we could store it because our, our retail um, online sales are going through the roof right now. And luckily we have the flower to go, but we don't have any place to to put it right now. So I'm actually looking for storage. But uh, I applaud everything that everybody's doing. COVID has hit us the same way it has with Kevin, um, uh, where our restaurant business has really gone down, but the retail is going up, uh, which is nice. And um, our, it's not really affecting the farmers yet as uh, they're still working the same way they have been. And we have lots of wheat going, we're planting right now. So um, anyway, thanks for putting this group together. That's it for me. Thank you so hey, much, Terry. Terry. Yeah, go ahead, um, Kevin. You know, we, we, we just started working with Charlie's Produce. Um, I don't know if you work with them. They haven't distributed flour before, but I know they're very interested in um, growing their flour business. They already serve a number of people that carry flour. And right now I know their businesses have been hit hard maybe they have warehouse space in Seattle for some of your flour and they've got ideal dry storage conditions for storing flour as well. Um, Great so idea. I, I'd, be I'd be happy to connect with you offline and get you some contact information. Um, but uh, I'd be happy to help. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kevin. That's okay. excellent. You're welcome. Yeah. Let me know if you need additional support on that as well. So that's great. Okay. Who's next? I want to say something. Um, hey, Amy. Hi. This is my son. This is my, I don't know why my son is signed in. I'm not Francis. I am Amy Halloran, and I'm here to tell you, the Midwest people, um, I work with a group called Artisan Grain Collaborative, and they've come up with a really cool solution uh, for all players in this chain called neighbor load. And so bakers like Ellen King from Hewn now have a button on their online order. People can buy a full price retail loaf that will get directed to a food pantry. The loaves are made with 50 at least 50% local flour. And then they go, so they sold 700 loaves in their first one bakery alone, um, at 650. So incredible way to secure all parts of this pink chain right now. And um, it's just beginning. I have information, but I'll put it in the chat and I'd love to see it get copycatted all over the place. That's fabulous. We shared the Artisan Grains Collaborative website earlier on the call. And I wonder if that's if this information's right on that website as well. It is, there's a button for neighbor loaves on there and um, it's gonna be going out to the Bread Bakers Guild America on their weekly newsletter. Um, but Alyssa Hartman, who's the, the director over at the Artisan Grain Collaborative came up with this idea, and put all the together. Um, she and I are, are eager, she's in the other room somehow. Great, and, yeah. Uh, but I'm here with my pals. And um, so happy to help make something happen um, anywhere. So That's great. There, I think it's a great idea. And Thanks. things like bags of flour, pan bags of flour will not waste going to pantries and pancake mix. And, you know, maybe Camus Country Mill has a whole bunch of, you know, bean because they've been doing that, their soup for years going into the food pantry. This is just a way to bring together these bookends of specialty grains and emergency feeding. They've always been good friends. We just didn't need pandemic this acquaintance. Thank you. That's Thanks. fabulous to share. So we'll definitely make sure that gets out to um, people on the call and see how we can uh, work here in the state to see if we can do something similar. So excellent. 
Who's next? We have about four and a half minutes left. Well, while you're waiting to share something, I can at least share that we are working with the WSDA right now to help them develop a needs assessment tool um, that will go out to all of the 500 or so food pantries in Washington State weekly. Um, and it will be looking specifically at what kind of food they need and quantity of food as well as supplies and labor. And so what you were sharing, Amy, dovetails really nicely with some of the feedback that we'll be getting throughout this statewide needs assessment that we'll be deploying weekly. We're going to be doing something similar through WSU as well with food and farm businesses, as well as internal WSU resource providers. So um, you'll see more information about that at the end of this call, but I'm hoping all of you can participate in that and that we'll be able to um, create some synergy around the work that we're doing to assess food security in the state. Um, and hope that this is long lasting as well in terms of some of the, the, the tools that we're putting in place that they don't just go away after this pandemic that we're really able to build um, on some of this work into the future to create a more resilient food system. So I just wanted to share that if no one else felt comfortable sharing. We do have a couple more minutes though if anyone else wants to give any updates, uh, provide information about resources just share what's going on right now and, and um, how they're coping with challenge. This is Liz Clark in Enumclaw. I work for King Conservation District. Um, I'm happy to get the word out to anybody in any way I can. Um, with the conservation districts, we're all trying to help support the food system in general. So. Um, feel free to PM me or email me or whatever, but um, we're trying to just make sure everybody's products are getting to where they need to go, whether it's farmers markets or direct to consumer without a market being in the middle. Um, happy to help. That's all I have to report for right now. Great. Thank you so much, Liz. And I know we just spoke with um, Allison Halpern from the State Conservation Commission to come up with a way to have uh, targeted communication through all 40 extension offices, as well as all 45 district offices across the state around resources. So we're really hoping to collaborate on that as well. Yeah, so um, people are getting information in their um, local districts. So thank you. Okay, we have about a minute left. Any other updates or things that people would like to share? Um, this is Mel. I don't really have much of an update because we're, you know, we're in scramble mode, but I just want to say like seeing all of your faces and talking to people has really made my week. So uh, again, I'm super grateful to have this community out there who is all struggling and yet we find these little glimmers of hope and, and possibility. So I just wanted to thank you all. Thank you. I couldn't have said that better. I feel the same way. These um, meetings have really been a high point just to be able to connect and see everyone and um, know that we are creating, we are part of a community that was already in place, but to feel how strong this community is has been really inspiring. Okay, 20 seconds left. Anyone else? I think we're just going to get thrown back into the main group in about 15 seconds. Um, I haven't done a breakout before, so I'm hoping that this is how it works. And then we'll um, do some reporting out um, with some uh, next steps as well. Three, two, one. Okay, great. So can everyone hear me? Yep. Awesome. So we'll just start with Doug D. Do you want to unmute and give a little update? Yeah, hey guys, um, Doug Doyle over at Mainstem Malt here in Walla Walla. Um, like everybody else, we've we've obviously been experiencing the same things. Um, so I want sort of a specific area of focus. We've actually been pretty pretty heavily focused on trying to support 
a number of distillers actually in the Northwest that are trying to do hand sanitizer. That's sort of become the, the action of courage that we can, we can take on. So Thinking Tree uh, Distillery down in Eugene, uh, Eric Chapman, for example, has been working closely with us. Uh, in Oregon, we're in contact with Brad Irwin, who is uh, vice president of the Oregon uh, Distillers Guild. And we're trying to figure out sockets where people who have column stills can take advantage of raw grain, not malted grain, which is unusual for us. So we're giving up some and trying to focus on, on uh, supporting folks with, with raw grain who can take advantage of Great. put it where it needs to be. So anyway, that's what we're doing beyond the, the norm. Awesome. And you know what? We, we don't have uh, enough time to get to everyone, I'm realizing. So it might be good if you have an update, if you can just unmute yourself and, um, you know, kind of self-select. Usually I call on people, but I just... Hi, this is uh, Jason Bishop. I'm, we farm in eastern Washington, and I thought I'd just share that we uh, have been cleaning grain, and uh, we're getting ready to seed, and uh, pretty much business as usual. I found an interesting market a few weeks ago. There was uh, someone that was looking to buy some uh, grain from a five... It goes in a five-gallon pail for emergency. So we sold them some grain there. But other than that, it's been pretty normal. And sorry, what's your what's the, what's the farm? This is Living Heritage Farms. Yes, hi, great. And I just a reminder: if you're not speaking, if you can mute because there's some background noise. Awesome. Anyone else have an update that they want to share? Uh, hello, um, my name is uh, Jacob Berkey. I'm new to the group. I'm with the Washington Department of Ecology Air Quality Program. And uh, I, I wanted to join this group because we have, some, we have some grants for soil health and things like that. I wanted to see where people were at. And I know times are kind of different right now, but uh, I just uh oh, did we lose you there, Jacob? Oh, I was just trying to keep it. Okay, it sounds like Washington Department of Ecology program has some grants for soil health. And maybe Jacob, if you could just pop your contact info in the chat box, uh, that would yeah. be great. I registered late. I'm not online with the Zoom. And oh, okay. so, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm purely on the phone right now, but I, I, I hope to connect with the group. It sounds like you're all doing really good work and it's, yeah, it's okay, bye. Great, so yeah, just let's get in touch after the call and we can get some resources out to folks. Anyone else who hasn't spoken wants to join, pop in and please, if you're not speaking, just mute yourself. Uh, rapidly putting together some processes related to how we will be able to help our customers with the uh, Payroll Protection Act and, and working through how that will be administered. There's some rules related to uh, if our borrowers have an operating line and capital to cover things like payroll and other operating expenses, how we can transit, uh, transition and instead use that PPP program. And our goal is to have that rolled out by Friday. So, you know, with lots of customers, that's a, a big push for us. Um, and also working through how we can make the renewal season on our operating lines a little easier because uh, of the just current conditions that we're in. So that's the, the main uh, thing that we're focused on right now. Awesome, Jessica, it would be great to get those links from you. Sure. Uh, if you wanna send I'll, them in I'll the survey them. after the call, yeah. Great.
Anyone else? Want to pop in here? Uh, hi, I'm Emily with Wildflower Baking. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, and I just wanted to talk about the, I guess, adjusted expectations that we had for the, the year coming up. We're a primarily farmer's market based baking brunch and pastry company in Portland, Oregon. And um, we rely almost exclusively on farmer's market sales. Um, so we're kind of unsure as to how the farmer's markets are going to pan out. So far, they're on in Oregon. I know in Washington, they've been canceled, but we are still expecting much lower sales um, at the markets and um, we're adjusting to do almost all sales via our online store. Um, and from talking to other restaurants in the area, that's kind of like what things are coming to is just doing pre-orders, no cash transactions, no like transactions at in person. Um, so it looks like we're kind of turning into almost a virtual bakery uh, at this moment in time. So um, yeah, those are the changes that we've made. Uh, increased online ordering. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, and it's, um, I know that there was a webinar that went out about direct marketing platforms um, that we can also link to as well if other folks are interested in ways, because um, I know that can be a steep learning curve for, for uh, some other people. And if you have any needs around that, please get in touch um, with myself uh, or that anyone on the food systems team, we can, we can link to those links. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Uh, this, is, this is Jessica again. You know, I did hear yesterday from the Inland Northwest Farmers Market Association that Governor Inslee in Washington um, has made some changes and the farmers markets will be able to uh, operate with certain provisions to comply with the health department, um, primarily around um, hand washing, washing stations at the entrances and the exit. And every vendor uh, can only have one patron at a time. So there's rules that everyone's trying to pivot to comply with. Uh, but mm -hmm. the good news is, is that if we can get like a lot of things, just these hand washing stations, it sounds silly, but on um, these markets, everyone needs to have two commercial size ones that they might still be able to make it a go. Uh, so they're rushing right now to try to get that put together. Absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the points that Emily brought up too, is just that culturally there's a big shift right now. So you know, even if they were open as usual, we're still anticipating less customers coming out, um, you know, uh, and just buying habits changing in general. I know for our local farmer's market here in Jefferson County, they had the clear to open, but because of so much public pushback, uh, the mayor's office encouraged them to delay the opening. So it's just really case by case and how, how markets are pivoting to their individual communities looks really different across the state. Um, so definitely want to keep involved with the Washington State Farmers Market Association for updates on that as well. Um, and I know that they're closely in contact with the Portland Farmers Markets also. Emily, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that. Um, not, not yet. I'm curious to see how everything goes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Great. Any other updates on the call? We have about five minutes remaining. I just, I'll jump in here real quick. Um, I'm just a home baker, but I spend a fair amount of time out on Reddit. And as was mentioned earlier, there's no uh, flour in any of our grocery stores, at least around here. So I have been sending people to Jim Challenger's website because he has a page out there that lists every small farm and small mill that he's heard about in the country by state. If you should go out and check, I think 
a lot of the ones I've seen and heard today are on his page, but if you're not, send him a request to get it added within usually 24 hours. There's a lot more people going out to that page right now looking for flour, looking for grain. So it's another way we can get uh, people going out to the farms, not physically, but contacting them for purchases. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll make sure to include this link. Is it? Yep. Challengers. It's Challenger Bread. 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 Great. And then if you look up in the upper left, there's one about ingredients, I believe. Are you able to send that link in the chat box? I can do that. Okay, great. Thank you, Jordan. Hey, this is Alyssa Hartman with the Artisan Grain Collaborative in the Midwest. Hello. I just popped in the link from Challenger and have been working closely with Jim. He's really trying to do any and everything he can right now to elevate farms and mills. So he, yeah, he'll be happy to help. And I'll just chime in quickly to say one of the initiatives that we are working on um, with our folks in the upper Midwest and have pulled together pretty quickly and would love to see other folks take on is this project called Neighbor Loaves. I put some info in um, the beginning of the chat and can send another link. But basically, we have been working with bakeries that source from local farms and mills. They've added a new product to their online stores called a neighbor loaf. People can go in and purchase those loaves and then bakeries um, charge their normal retail price for them. They buy grain from local farms or mills, they bake the bread, and then um, they're donating, not really donating though, because the community is paying them to do it, uh, but that bread is going into emergency feeding organization for bakeries. And in a week, um, a th more than a thousand loaves were purchased. So that's something that is pretty tangible and somewhat easy for the general public, who I think is sitting at home trying to figure out what to do to help. Um, and it's like a $6 thing. Uh, many people have that amount of funds. Um, and we've had a lot of success with it so far. So I'd love to see others um, try to pilot similar initiatives. And I'm happy to share what we've done and how others can get involved. I'm adding my email to the chat, so please reach out. And Abba, we should probably just connect directly. Absolutely. Later. Yeah, and if you want to send an update, we can include that in the in what goes out as well to the rest Great. of the group after the call. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We've got about another minute left. If somebody wants to jump in with a way that they're pivoting, a way that they're responding, supporting the local grain economy right in this time. Craft Maltsters Guild, do you want to pop on here for a sec? Yeah, sorry, I'm a little shy. <laughs> new here. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Jesse, I'm the new executive director of the Craft Maltsters Guild. I started in December, so um, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind of a few months, and then all this started with COVID 19. So, um, our organization um, is kind of national and international in focus. So it's kind of hard for us to, um, and I've been trying to put together resources for our membership on our website. And, and sorry to jump in, but um, sorry to interrupt you. We only have about 10 seconds left. And oh, I just want you sorry. to get cut off, but there are, um, we did include a link to the resources you had created as well. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, welcome. And I know that uh, that was not a lot of time and we have a lot of folks on the call, a lot more than we thought were going to join. So, um, we hope that you uh, do do the survey and if there are any updates that you want us to include um, as part of the resources that we're going to send out as part of this call, there's a box for you to um, put those links, the text, um, and any other information that you uh, in that form and we hope that you fill that out right after this call um, so that we can 
help elevate and connect you to these evolving needs. Remind everybody again about the listserv that we just created on this call has been automatically signed up and we're going to be doing a launch of the listserv uh, this afternoon. So um, that's Cascadia Greens at lists.connors.wsu.edu. And uh, you'll see that email go out as well. So that's another way that folks can stay connected and uh, share resources. And then our next point is scheduled for July 1st. We may um, have another one in between now and then just to respond to these evolving needs. Um, but that is our plan. And um, again, we're going to be meeting with national leaders from regional grain movements. Uh, in a few minutes here and we're going to be reporting back what other people are working on um obviously this was a a lot into a one seminar uh, webinar but uh we're so glad that you could make it and we're, we're hopeful that we can do better next time in terms of getting everybody's voices heard uh here are some of the websites that we have we'll just leave this screen up um so you can see it uh we have the craft monsters guilds career center um, new links to the Artisan Grains Collaborative Regional Grain Map, uh, our websites, and again, the 21 Day Racial Equity Habit Building Challenge, which is live now through Friday to sign up for if you have um, the uh, bandwidth, and it's a great thing to do with a team as well. Um, again, the listserv link is there, and I know that there were many other great links shared in the chat, so make sure to check that out. And uh, are there any other just questions or comments before we hop off. I know we're at the top of the hour, but if folks want to stay on and do a, a, a little uh, a little question and answer or discussion or just anything else, any other thoughts, you're welcome to stay on the line for another few minutes here. So if you have to hop off, we understand, but um, anyone else want to jump in? This is Laura. I just wanted to mention that the Grain Collaborative uh, brought up their neighborhood loaves program and that's the you can find that on this website here grain collaborative rather than going to the grain map it would be on their front page is what I believe Amy Halloran mentioned great yeah that was mentioned in our breakout call, and I'm excited to talk more about that on the national call also Thank you, Wes, or uh, questions. I was just going to say thank you for organizing this and thank you to everyone for participating. It, um, Mel summed it up really nice in our session that how nice it was to be able to see everyone and feel a sense of community through all of this. I agree.